Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I just pulled my boat out of the shed, getting ready for the summer season, and I realized the transom is bad. This is no easy job, so I'm gonna explore the easiest possible ways to replace this transom. My name is Randy, you're watching Go Midwest Fishing. All right, what we're gonna be working on is a 1991 18 foot Alumacraft competitor. It's an aluminum boat. I have an 88 horse Evinrude motor on it, which is not really relevant other than the fact that I was going to put a, a newer, bigger motor on, and that's when I realized <laughs> the transom was all bowed out and not uh, in good enough shape to hold a new motor. All right, let's take a look at uh, how I noticed this transom is bad. All right, when I was first looking at this, I just kind of looked right down the, the back of the boat here, and it looks like it's kind of bowing out like this with the weight of the motor. And the biggest clue over here, <laughs> you see all this silicone I've been putting in here is because it keeps being a bigger and bigger gap there. And that's because the transom's starting to pull away from the inside of the boat. And here's where you can really see right where the bolts are. I mean the, little, the top cap here, I can fit all my fingers under here easily. It's about three quarter inch of play to where this should be. And it's just sucking in more and more as I keep tightening up these bolts to the motor. So to get a better look at this, I pop this corner cap off here and the corner piece here, just two screws pop that out, pretty easy. Now you can see the wood in here. This is a two inch wood transom and I mean you can just look at the wood right here, I can peel it apart by hand. So you can tell it's rotted here and it's even worse over there. So okay, one of the issues I'm going to have here is this aluminum top cap. It's actually just, it's just bent straight around and then this side is not actually attached, it's just kind of curled over. But to get, be able to get into here to get out the transom, this has to come off. So you either got to bend it out or you got to cut it off, one of the two. But then you have to have something to replace it with. Alright, let's explore a couple options that we can use to replace the transom. Obviously it's made out of wood so you could make a new wood one by buying this is two inches thick, so you're gonna have to buy a couple pieces of plywood and glue them together, cut it out to fit the exact template and put it in here. And then there is a composite one that you can buy, I think it's called Kusa board. And that also comes in several different thicknesses, but I didn't find one that came in two inch thickness. So again, you'd have to buy a couple of them and glue those together. But those would last a lot longer and they wouldn't rot when they get wet. So both those options require to take a full size board and put it in here somehow. So you have to take this whole thing apart. Now once you cut out the template and get the right size transom, now you gotta get it in here. So you either gotta remove the metal somewhere to get in there. And um, you can remove this top plate, which we did on my father-in-law's boat not too long ago, but it was a real pain in the butt to actually get the transom to fit down in there underneath these end caps and everything. Uh, another option is you can take off the back skin here, which is kind of a big problem. You got a lot of rivets and then trying to get it all back together and you probably have to repaint it and everything because you're going to mess it all up. So I think what most people do is they pull apart this whole inside. Uh, in this case I got, you know, these compartments here and stuff. All this would have to come out, all the sheet metal. A lot of rivets, a lot of cutting, and then cut away the inside sheet metal here, aluminum, and so you can just put it in from the inside, then you gotta put it all back together. So I'm looking for the easiest way to do this. And I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be great if they just made like a liquid you could just pour in there and it would harden? And it turns out they do. There appears to be a couple different companies that make it. Uh, I went with Carbon Core, and it's basically, it comes in five gallon pails, and then you mix uh, some catalyst with it, and you got about 20 minutes to pour it in here. And after two hours, it hardens up, and you got a new transom that is waterproof. It's a, I'm not sure what it's made out of. It's kind of a ceramic and something else. Anyway, it, it'll outlast the boat. It's not going to rot when it gets wet. So it's a great product. Um, I haven't used it yet, so it should be arriving here in the next week or so. So, we can, so right now, I'm going to just get it prepped so we can do that. All right, so yeah, pouring the liquid in there might be the easiest way. But I know some of you are thinking, okay, how much does it cost? Well, it's actually not as bad as I thought. You know, if you had someone actually replace this transom for you, you're talking anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000 possibly. 
if you want to use you know, all your plywood, you're still going to be spending you know around 100 bucks on wood and all your labor. That Kusa board uh, is going to cost priced it right around the 500, five to 600 dollars. Well, the carbon core costs approximately 200 dollars for a five gallon pail of it. And you do a little measurement, they have a little calculator online, you measure the length, length and width and all that stuff. And mine came out to say, you know, 2.2 .2 buckets of this stuff. And at $200 a bucket, I thought, well, I'm gonna try to get away with just two buckets. And if it doesn't quite fill it up, then I'll maybe use some wood or something to just go across the top part of it. Well, before we put in the new transom, we gotta get it prepped and ready to be put in. So the first thing I do is just remove the motor and any of the stuff on the back that we don't need. And one of the best parts about this uh, liquid one where you can just pour it in, see all these, you got all these ports and all this, uh, all the holes in here, let's see. You know, you got all your tubes that run through, all this kind of stuff, every bolt, everything, to get a transom to fit in there. You need to remove all those things and then have to cut new holes and put them back in. But if you have the liquid, it's just gonna go in and just surround all those things and you don't have to worry about any of that. You're free. All right, motor's off. That's no small task. These motors are heavy and you gotta disconnect a lot of stuff. And then you need a place to put your motor and I made this just a homemade stand out of uh, scrap wood. It's pretty simple. So if you don't wanna go buy a motor stand, you just get a couple two by fours and here's, I got an old like two by 10 or something right here. And uh, makes a good mount. I just put a couple bolts through, hold it on. And when you lift off your motor, like these oven roots here have a nice, Nice little hook right here. Just connect right to that. Uh, that mercury I'm working on, I'll be working on next. You actually have to put a, a bolt through the top of the fly hole here to lift it off. I just have one of those ordered for that motor. The other thing you may not realize is how heavy these are. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was somewhere around 350 pounds this motor was. So you're not going to be lifting it by hand. You're going to need some kind of engine hoist, or in my case, I got a little car lift here that. It worked pretty good. It was hard getting it high enough to get it on that mount I made. You'll probably lower that mount a little bit, make it a little easier. But here's what we're left with. Nice uh, clean back end. Looks like it could use a new paint job. Um, so then I'm gonna remove any other uh, stuff, uh, the transducer and all that stuff. I got all these bolts here. I think I'm gonna take out most of those bolts, the screw holes everywhere, and then I'll let that liquid uh, put like tape over it and let the liquid fill in all those holes. I can sand it flush and then maybe just repaint this whole back end. All right, we're almost done removing stuff. Just got the transducer and the uh, thing for the boat speed. Get rid of that. Maybe pull out some of these screws that aren't needed and then we'll be ready to cut off the top and start digging into it. All right, I'm getting excited to see how bad the transom is. So we got to pull this top cap off. First, we'd I pulled that side off, but we got this little corner piece right here. It's riveted on, so we just take a little drill and drill out the rivets. There you go. Oh, yeah. Grab there's one up here too. I gotta take off the little corner piece. right off. Now this loosens this up here so you can get this trim piece off. This is one more rivet hitting up in there. There it goes. There you go, just a corner piece of trim. Put a few dents in it, but not too bad. All right, now we can look at this side. Here's the right corner piece. And it's not quite as bad as the other side, but see it is. Still dig into it pretty easy. Here's the other side. 
they're about the same this one might be a little worse okay now to take off the top cap and this is one piece of aluminum just folded over and then it's folded over on the other side too it's not attached to this side so um so I'm taking the angle grinder and just cutting along the seam or taking the jigsaw. I know we're cutting aluminum, the angle grinder doesn't do quite as well. It's not that thick, so oh, I'll decide which one I'm going to do here. I decided I'm going to start off with the jigsaw. It seems to cut aluminum a little better. I don't know if it'll, how it'll do going into the transom part, but I'll give it a shot. If that doesn't work, we'll use the angle grinder. That worked pretty good. Alright, now for the moment of truth. Oh, this has a nice crack in it, broke right in half. I'll have to fix that too. Yeah. So my goal is I'm thinking you can get a new cap, but I'm thinking of just welding it back on when we're done. We'll see if that works or not. Alright, first look. Yeah, definitely squeeze together right there. I'll give you a closer look here. All right, first look at the transom with the cap off. Here's the corners. And look how skinny it gets right there. Almost half the width compressed together. Looks like another bad spot right here. Look at this. Check it out by hand. And it gets a little harder there. Bad spot there. So there you go. Now it's time to uh, dig out the old transom. And now I'm going to remove all this caulk I got down here that I put in to seal the gap that it was compressing in there. So I'll get that off so I can reattach that the way it should be. Now I got the caulk out. You can see how bad it really is. You just pulled away right there you can see all the screws that are supposed to be attaching it so we're gonna have to somehow get it screwed back in once we get the new transom poured i'm almost thinking of removing this so i can get in there because it's hard to access these screws so i really was hoping not to have to take apart this back piece here but if i do at least i don't have to take apart the, the skin on the transom at least just remove this part and get it screwed back in the way it should be so i'm still not sure if i'm going to do that or not i just looked over all these compartments here and pretty much everything's interconnected so you pull out one thing you gotta pull out pretty much everything the sides and being this screwed in here i don't know how it's all going to come out it's going to be a big project so i think i'm going to try to get away with not doing that first if you look at the screws here i can kind of you know push it back together Better look there. So maybe I can just put a, like a spacer in there and hold it nice and tight. When I pour the new transom, it should form around those screws and then hold them in that, hold them into it. So, all right, time to start digging away and see what get get out of here. Oh, nice big chunk. All right, I'm just going to keep working on it. I'll come back when uh, I hit a hard spot and I'll show you how I get that out. But for now, I'll just take out whatever is loose and easy to get out. All right, that was some tedious work. But uh, it took me well, a couple hours to do anyway. Just keep at it. What I did is I took a drill. Just drilling down in there and I take the vacuum, suck it out, drill it, suck it out. And uh, the left side here was nice and rotten, so it just turned into sawdust real easy. Stuff on the right it was a little bit harder wood, so I had to really uh, get a bigger bit on and just drill that out. But I want to show you what it looks like down inside of here. I left some of the wood here because this is still hard. 
and um, they said the carbon core will actually envelop the old wood and just kind of become part of it. So I don't see any need to take this out and have to redo all this bolts and stuff. Plus when you pour it, you know, I'm assuming it's just going to you know, pour up level with this. And then if I wanted it to get up into here, I'd have to take off these end caps and, you know, make a way to pour it in the top so it fills up these side pieces. This way I don't have to worry about those side pieces. Let's look down inside of here. You can see it, uh, there's the old wood and there's the uh, drain tubes and there's a pipe for the, I think it was the live well, something like that. Go through, you got more bolts. Look at all those bolts going through to hold it. And all those bolts would have to come out if you were doing a solid wood transom or the other composite one. But um, right here is where the motor mounts. It's right down in there. And it's kind of, it's not straight across, kind of change you kind of see. I don't know if you can see in there the little ridge where then the motor goes and then it goes back down again. Here's on the right side and it looks like this side lost a little bit of foam down there because the other side is filled up. You can't see the bottom of the boat. And then just some more bolts and uh, yeah, there's the wood on this side. So I'll show you from the back side here that transom it only goes down about from here, it goes just underneath this tube here, kind of cuts across, and it goes down for the motor right here, and then it kind of comes back up and over like this. So it doesn't completely fill this whole V. This is all open underneath. This is where all the bilge pump and everything is, so there's no actual transom right there. So it's not quite as uh, thick as I thought, or deep, because I ordered those two buckets of carbon core, which I thought was going to be not quite enough, but now I think it's going to be more than enough fill that up especially if I leave those side pieces of wood on and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make some like two inch spacers hopefully out of aluminum to make this you can see where it's kind of squeezed in from where it was the motor was bolted on so I'll keep that a nice two inch space so uh, it fills up a two inch gap and then right here where it's pulling apart those screws should uh, envelop into the carbon core and kind of be locked in there but what I think I'll do is take an aluminum weld and just beat it right along there and weld that together so it's nice and solid and uh, doesn't pull apart. So I was glad I didn't have to take apart this whole compartment back here. That would have been a nightmare. So it worked out not having to do that. But uh, yeah, if you're going to put a solid one in, all these bolts throughout here and all these screws would have to come out. Don't want to deal with that. Check out the old transom laying all over the floor. That's what it was like. So anyway, I'm wrapping it up for the day. I'll come back tomorrow and work on it again. But I wanted to uh, show you that this is not a sealed compartment. So when you pour the new transom in, it's just going to leak underneath the floor and like go out through all the little gaps and holes in here. So I think what I'm going to do is go get some of that uh, great stuff, the uh, foam, expanding foam. Get down there and kind of just fill up all that holes where there used to be foam, but it's gone now, and make it so it's a nice sealed compartment so when I do pour it in, it won't leak out all over the place. So I got some of this uh, fill and seal. It's like great stuff. It's uh, expanding foam. And to get all the way down the bottom, I made this little contraption here. Here's the little spout that screws on. I just taped a hose onto it, put it through some PVC. It sticks out the end. That way I can jab it down in there and get it to shoot right where I want it to. All right, Reed just... Showed up, he's gonna help me out here. He's learning, learning the ways. All right, so I need to get it down there, so I put this little tube on there so I can reach down into the little holes. Yeah, okay, look down into, into there and see if it comes out the end if I squeeze it. That's what you got today. Yeah. It's too hard to reach down that far down in there. All right, giving it time to expand and harden up. I'll give you a little shot with the GoPro here to see if you can see what's in there. It's kind of filled in all these little gaps. There's some little pieces stuck to the side there that I'll, I'll scrape off and level out a little bit. But right here is the main problem spot where it could get underneath the boat. So I filled that in nicely. Next up, I got this. Actually, an old piece of aluminum I took off this boat. There used to be a tackle box over there built in. 
I removed it and put in a rod locker. That's got a kind of nice little angle on it there that if I cut this into like little two inch strips, I'm going to put it in between here to space it out because it's supposed to be two inches, but as you can tell, it's kind of squeezed in right here and needs to be spread apart. So that'll give it a nice spacing so when I do pour in the uh, carbon core, it'll be a nice even two inches all the way along there. So that's what I'm going to do next and then we'll clean up some of this outside stuff and cover up all the holes with some tape, that kind of stuff, so nothing can uh, come out. And I'll look for any other holes that any possible spots it could leak out at. So I just cut a bunch of two inch spacers out of aluminum and I'll show you what I did with them. So remember how the top of this transom here was all wavy and it wasn't uh, a nice solid two inches. So I just took those little two inch spacers and I just kind of spaced them throughout wherever it was, you know, skinnier than two inches. It pushed it back out. And remember that big gap I had right here? Kind of helped close that up. So now what I'm going to attempt to do, I've never done this before, I'm going to do some uh, aluminum welding. I'm going to do it right along this seam. So to try to hold this together, I'm going to just weld this little seam right here all the way across. And that should help keep it from uh, pulling apart. <laughs> I cleaned that out as best as I could, got all the paint off, got down to bare aluminum. There's still a little bit of caulk in some spots, but it's really hard to get out in these corners. Anyway, I'm going to use these burns raising and welding rods or aluminum with some map gas. These melt at about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, so you got to heat up the metal to 700 degrees. And then when you touch the rod to it, it should melt right into it. You do not want to heat the rod up itself. You got to heat the metal that it's going to. Well, I'm just going to call that one a complete fail. It did not work as I was hoping it would. Uh, first of all, I was not able to get this uh, aluminum heated up hot enough to be able to melt the uh, welding rod. So it kind of came in and big chunks and didn't really stick stuck a little bit but it's not real not like i wanted it to and also uh how this was bowed in before it just kind of warped that and made it bend outward so you can see so i think i'm just going to scrap that idea and what i'm going to do is i'm going to try a board here and put along here and push against there to kind of straighten this out and make it as flat as i can make it before I pour the carbon core in there, which just arrived today. There it is. Comes in two boxes. So I got two five gallon pails of this stuff. All right, so I got it pretty much prepped up, ready to go, I think. I had a little trouble with this buckling right here. This was a little wavy. So what I did is I clamped two boards on either side of it. I made a whole bunch of little spacers to put in there to try to keep it a nice even two inches. It's gonna have a little bit of wave here in the front just because I couldn't get it out. But overall, I think it'll be just fine. And I also, down here, I took all these bolt holes and I scraped them off and put some aluminum tape over them. All along here and here and here. Because you don't want any holes that the stuff can leak out of. And don't forget, down inside here where the motor bolts through, there's holes on the inside too. So I went in and uh, taped those up. And there's actually some seams and stuff that just left a little gap so I taped all those seams. I put a flashlight down here and I looked on the inside to see if I could see any light come through and then I plugged all those holes with some more of that aluminum tape. All right, most people use a funnel. They make some kind of homemade funnel that goes in here and then they pour it into that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that or not. I might just go straight up pour it and see what happens. All right, here's how the carbon core comes. It comes in a box like that. Here's what's inside of it. You got the catalyst. You have it actually measured out already for a five gallon bucket. You get a metal bucket here. So if I just look inside of this one, I haven't opened it yet. That's just what it looks like. Got a little painter down on the side there, tucked in with the catalyst. Oh good, it does have a pour spout. That might help. So now what we need is one of these, just a regular like paint mixer, stuff you mix in mud for drywall, that kind of stuff. And you're supposed to mix it up for five minutes, then you got about 20 minutes to an hour, they say, of working time before it starts to harden up and you can't use it no more. So 
So we'll see a continuous pour, get two of them. So I think I'll have enough time to put one in and then mix the other one and pour it in before it gets too hard. All right, let's get to work. All right, I'm gonna mix in the catalyst. I took off the lid, see what it looks like there. It's kind of thick, it smells a lot like Bondo auto body filler. Just like it. It's pre-measured out and it's, uh, depending on the temperature, it'll be different amounts, but at this temperature it should be the whole thing. Pull it all in and mix it for five minutes. All right, here goes nothing. I think that little spout's gonna be uh, not big enough. It's kind of thick, so I don't know if it pours that. So I'm just gonna dump it right out of the bucket. So far, I'm not feeling too much. So it filled up, yeah, I'd say almost halfway. So hopefully this next bucket will fill it all the way up. I think we're call that good. Let it set up a little bit, then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all hardened up. All right, it's the following day. It all hardened up. It only took about two hours and they're nice and solid. It got kind of warm, but now it's cold and rock solid. So let's take off these forms here and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Hopefully she still holds together when I pull this off. so it doesn't matter if it's a little scuffy. All right, here's what it looks like all done. And I said I didn't have quite enough, so there's a you know an inch or so gap in here. It ain't full, but it's still pretty solid. And if I put a cap on here, it should hold all right. This side's a little higher up. I spilled a little extra down here. I got chisel out. But you see that, that big hole that was right here? It's now... Uh, Pretty well sealed up, just a little gap there from where it was buckling. And on the back side, uh, we got all the tape here. I gotta pull that off. I pulled this one off. And let's see if we can get that out of the light there. And yeah, I just flushed it right out. So I just sand over this and I'm gonna repaint it. Got it all prepped for painting now. What I did is I just sanded it all down. I filled in all the, there's a couple little holes left, um, some pits in there and stuff. I just took some automotive body filler. I just kind of scraped it over the top just to fill it in so it's nice and flush. When I paint it, it'll look nice and solid. I also went on uh, the inside seam here where there's just a little bit of the gap. I just put some body filler in there too to help make that a nice seamless look. Uh, now I just got to take these end caps, put them on here, and make the new transom cap. I got some... Uh, Aluminum angle iron, I guess. It's not iron, but <laughs> I'm gonna put it on here and I'll show you how to do that to just cap that off. And then I'll just rivet that in and I'll be all ready to start painting. Oh yeah, and I wanted to mention like, just cause there's that little gap in the top there, I just put some of that expanding foam in there, just kind of fill it up just to make sure uh, no water gets in there and gets stuck in there, whatever, it helps keep that dry. I'm using to attach these corner pieces, just some stainless steel screws. Then I'm going to try to rivet the actual top rail in here. But this will work better for here. Now let's put this corner cap back on. There's two screws and that goes right in. 
Again, just took the stainless screws that came out of it, reusing those. All right, here's what I'm using for the transom cap. Just two pieces of angled aluminum. I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna overlap them like that to make a channel. And then I can kind of, you know, space it accordingly to fit exactly. And originally I was just gonna kind of weld them together here. But since I had a miserable fail on the inside there, got some foam in there and stuff, I don't want to heat that up. So I think I'm just going to take some silicone and put it in between the channels, and then rivet them on the side. That should hold it in place nicely. So first we got to just measure out exactly how far we want it. Fortunately, uh, an eight foot piece wasn't quite long enough to cut in half, so I had to buy two of them. They're about 18 bucks each. There is this, do have a screw at the end of this corner cap, so I, was gonna, I might just try to overlap, but just a hair until I touch that screw there. Or I can even pull that one screw out and then just screw through that. Yeah, that way I can overlap a little more. Try that. Yeah. Aluminum cuts real easy. Yeah, I think that's going to look pretty nice. It's thin enough, it's the 1 uh, 16th inch aluminum, I think, so it doesn't stick out too much, so it shouldn't interfere with any of the motor mounting or anything. Alright, two pieces are cut, let's put them on here, see what it looks like. Give you more of a close up here so you can kind of squeeze it together so it fits straight. Using some of this flex shot, actually, uh, you know, see, I've seen on TV stuff, and it actually works really good. I'll put a nice little bead along here to help stick these two together, keep any water from getting underneath it. And I'm just gonna put some clamps on here and hold it tight as I rivet it in. All right, one more thing before I start painting, I think for a little more stability, I've got a this quarter inch aluminum plate. I think I'm gonna adhere to the Right on the inside here where the motor bolts on, give it a little more stiffness there at the top. Like I said, because we didn't quite fill this all the way to the very top. So I want these top bolt holes to have something a little bit stronger to hold on to. So let's do this. I'll just cut it off here right at the top. And then uh, maybe I'll take two little screws and hold it in. Because the big bolts will be going through and hold that on nice and tight. But I'll just put two little screws to hold it so it doesn't fall off when the motor's not on. All right, plate is screwed on. Now I'm gonna drill through, I already pre-drilled the motor mount holes right through the carbon core. It drilled really nice. And uh, now I gotta go through those holes and right through the aluminum, so I'll get my bit sharp enough. Yeah, gotta get the big drill. That's better. I think that's all I was gonna do. Now we can start painting. All right, we're going to start off with aluminum primer, Rust-Oleum. All right, next step is the actual paint. I got some uh, Rust-Oleum acrylic enamel. It's made for painting cars. And if your boat sits in the water, you're going to want to use some kind of a marine paint. But uh, mine's in the water when I'm fishing, otherwise it's stored inside the shed. So this stuff will, should hold up pretty good. All right, here's after two coats of that aluminum colored paint. It's pretty shiny. It outshines the rest of the boat. We're gonna have to repaint that now and make it match. Uh, I should have, wish I had a little bit darker gray, but this is all they had at the store at the time. But uh, you know, looks pretty nice. All right, next step, we got some 1K clear coat. It's an automotive clear coat. And I couldn't find the 2K stuff. They don't sell at the store, so. Next best thing right here. All right, the transom is complete. Now we just gotta put the motor on and take it for a test drive. First take a quick look here. Overall, I think it turned out pretty good. Nice and shiny. The color doesn't look too bad with the rest of the boat once it dried. There you go, take a look inside. That clear coat made it nice and shiny though. Works good. And you go to this side here. This top rail worked pretty good too with just those two pieces of angled aluminum just overlapping. 
and then I put the, the solid plate in here that'll give it a nice solid backing to keep that rigid and yeah forgot to take a sticker off there but obviously I could have done a lot better this is my workhorse here I you know this is the one I fish in I just need it functional it doesn't have to be really pretty so if you have a nice showboat or something you can take a little extra time painting it um, there's still a few little pits in the back here that I missed you know, I could have spent a lot of time detailing this and making it look an absolute perfect, but I don't need that. I just need to fish in it and make it work. So let's go get that motor on. All right, the motor's on. I want to show you something kind of cool. So back, so we had the old transom, these little pegs down here, they were right up against the transom and now they stick out a good half inch or so. And this did raise up a little bit more, so I ended up going from the top bolt down to the second bolt. Put it off it just fine. So I'm just going to fire up the motor, make sure it runs, and we're going to take it on the lake, do some fishing, see how she performs. We're back from our little test run everything worked great I actually gained about two miles an hour on my top end speed with the new transom so I think everything's working out good total cost for this whole thing six hundred and thirty one dollars the carbon core two hundred dollars a bucket and then ten dollars per bucket needs a catalyst and then you got shipping and tax and everything so the total carbon core was uh, five hundred and fifty seven dollars and then I got the aluminum top rail here that was $26 and paid $48 for all the painting supplies. So total cost $631 to do it yourself with a composite transit, which uh, it's not too bad actually. I guess the question is, if I had to do another transit, would I do it again? And yes, definitely do this the same way again. Uh, the only difference, I might uh, get that extra bucket of carbon cord and fill it up completely. Um, I didn't really like that little bit of gap in the top, but I didn't really want to spend the extra 200 bucks for it. Um, I guess you could fill up these little end caps here. That's really my only complaint with it is once it's level, how do you get it up into here? You'd have to cap this off, open up these ends, and then pour it down into the end to fill this up. But since the boards in here were still strong enough, I just left those. I'm just your average fisherman. I got some mechanical skills, but I'm no uh, boat technician, and I was able to do this myself. So. Most anybody would be able to do this. It's not too hard. So if you're looking to replace the transom on your aluminum boat, I hope this helped. All right, everyone, we'll see you next time.